Okay, this video is just demonstrating a library style iOS app with Core Data and iCloud integration. So the features of this uh, sample app include the ability to use either a local or an iCloud data store. It includes a setting bun settings bundle um, that allows the user to use set use iCloud on or off uh, to make backups and to display the actual applications version and build number. It will also prompt the user to choose a storage option when they change the use iCloud preference. Uh, it'll migrate Core Data Store to and from iCloud depending on the user's preference setting and their response to the prompts. It'll detect deletion of an iCloud store from another device and clean up by creating a new empty iCloud store. It'll check for the existence of iCloud files when migrating a local store and it'll prompt the user asking whether they would like to merge the existing data or disc discard the data and just use the iCloud store. It'll also make a backup of the iCloud store uh, if the backup preference is set to on when the application is launched it'll make a backup to the application's documents directory um, using a timestamped file name. The backup file can then be copied from iTunes using iTunes file sharing uh, and restored via iTunes file sharing. Okay, we're running the demo. Um, just before we start, just explain that we've got three Finder windows open, one showing the device's local storage, um, another showing the device's iCloud container, and a third one showing the iCloud container itself. Okay, we're going to run the application now, and on launch, it immediately, if it's the first time it's been launched, then it'll pop up and ask whether you want to use iCloud or local storage. So I've now just selected local storage. And go into the settings page and you can see that iCloud's set up to be local. So I'll just go back into the app and we'll add a new record. And then I'll switch across and we'll have a look in the application or the device's local directory. And there you can see in the documents directory we've got the persistent store and we've got nothing in the iCloud container on the device or in iCloud itself. Okay, we'll now just make a backup of this local store. So I'll go to the settings page, switch the make backup switch on, go back to my app and you can see in the local container that there's immediately there's been a timestamped copy made of the persistent store. Okay, I'll we'll now go back to the settings and you can see the make backup flag is automatically turned off and we'll now migrate the store to iCloud so turn the setting on go back to our app and as soon as we do that we, the app automatically makes another backup and then migrates the store to the iCloud container and I'll add a new record and you can see the app now just depends bracket C to indicate that uh, it's actually running with iCloud options on. Okay, now we're running in iCloud. What I'm going to do is make a backup of my iCloud store. So I go back to my settings, switch the backup flag on, go back to my app, and you can see there's immediately another copy of the store um, made with a timestamp.
Okay, we are now going to switch our store back to a local store. So I go back to settings, turn off iCloud, I bring back my app, and the app immediately detects that iCloud settings have changed and asks me what I want to do. Uh, so in this case, I'll keep a copy on my iPhone, and you can see the core data, the iCloud store has been removed, and We've now got the persistent store back. Okay, we're now going to uh, demonstrate what happens when we have two devices running. So I'm just going to start and launch the app on my iPad. And when I've done that, I will set the iPad up to run using iCloud. So we should see a store being created in the iCloud. So if you look in the bottom left container, uh, Xcode, all right, okay, so the app started up on Xcode. And I've just switched it to use the iCloud, and you can see it's created the iCloud store. Oh, the transaction logs in iCloud. I'm just syncing the simulator now, so it'll copy across those log files from iCloud. Okay, and so while the app's running, uh, nothing's going to happen, but when I close down the app or switch from the app and switch back to the app, then it detects that there is an iCloud file and it then asks whether to keep on my iPhone or whether I should delete it or whether I should keep using iCloud. So in this case we will keep using iCloud And that's obviously picked up that an iCloud file already exists and we'll just merge the data. Okay, so let's just go and look in the iCloud transaction logs and we can see the iPad transaction log. And if you look in the devices container, there is the directories are there, but there is no transaction log. So just remembering, we've got to trigger the download on the simulator, um, and sometimes this can take a while. There you go. Okay, so the transaction logs appeared, and as soon as we do that, pretty much the transaction logs appear in the uh, table view. Okay, now I'll just delete one of these records on the iPad, and you can see the transaction log coming through. Um, I might have to synchronize again. Okay, I've just synchronized, so we should see that transaction log. Okay, that's replicated across, and there you go, almost immediately, core data does the update, and uh, the record gets removed. Okay, we'll now turn off iCloud settings and then we also choose the option of removing or deleting the iCloud data. So bring up the app and it, and we'll select delete from our iPhone. So we should then end up with an empty store, local store. There we go, and you can see the iCloud folders have all disappeared and we've just got the local store with no data. Okay, we're just going to show how we can simply remove the store and rename it. So I'm just closing the app down to make sure it's not actually running on the device. And again, bear in mind we're in the simulator, but this is effectively what happens when you replace stores using iTunes. 
Okay, so I'm just going into the local documents directory and I'm going to rename the persistent store to be um, something else and I'll take one of our backup our backups and I'll rename that. Okay, that's all done and now I'll launch the app and there we go, we've managed to restore our data. It's easy as that. Okay, I'm going to just demonstrate restoring a file on using iTunes. So I'm going to restore a file on the iPad. I'm just going to clear any files out of the simulator. So we'll restore on the iPad and then I'll set the iPad to use iCloud and we'll see the restored data from the iPad appearing in the simulator. Okay, I've just launched iTunes and I'm going to the apps folder on the iPad and then I'll scroll down to file sharing and I'll go back go to our sample app and there we can see the files on the iPad so what I'll do is I'll uh, delete the iPad the apps store and I'll uh, rename one of the other ones So you could copy these from Finder or copy them to Finder to back them up on your PC or your iPad uh, or your Mac. Okay, I've done that. So I'll just get out of um, iTunes. Okay, I'll run the app on the iPad and with iCloud options on and you can see iCloud, it's uh, iPads synchronized the logs to iCloud and I'll go into the app on the simulator, turn iCloud on. Remember at the moment we've got no data so I'm going to turn it on straight away and I'll synchronize the simulator and uh, launch our app. Okay I'll just go back to Xcode and select the simulator and run the app again and quickly bring up the finder so you can see it's created the core data store and it's just imported the data from my cloud. Okay, I'm just going to add another record on, on the iPad um, and then I'm going to switch the iPad to use local storage only and remove the iCloud store and we can see the simulator gets notified that the store has been removed and it will automatically create an empty local store. So we've just seen that record that I created on the iPad come through um, and I'm now just busy switching the iPad to use a local store. Okay, so we should see the transaction logs in the core data disappear. There we go. Um, and I'll probably need to trigger the simulator to synchronize. Okay, simulator synchronized, so it's now removed its local copy of the core data store and core data on the device will pick up the fact that the store has been removed. can take a few seconds for this to happen, as you can see. Right, okay, it's just picked up that the store's been removed. So it's basically then gone and automatically built a new empty store. 
Uh, again, it's not clear that this is documented behavior from core data, but I guess I could take different action on the device in, in the app to, to not do this if necessary. Alright, well that's it um, in this demo. I uh, hope that's useful and I hope you get your app to work at least like this, if not better. Cheers.